This podcast has been sponsored by the Gottlieb family in Marion Station, Pennsylvania, in honor of their grandmothers who have lived Jewish values and shared their wisdom with the next generation. This is The Book of Life, a podcast that uncovers life lessons from Judaism's most important book, helping you power your day with purpose. Here is Ruchi Koval. So there's this reality TV show called Chopped, okay? And clearly it's very popular. It's run for 46 seasons. And on the show, these contestants are given a basket of mystery ingredients, often totally random and not usually used together. And what they have to do is open the basket and come up with a recipe plan to create something delicious out of this basket of ingredients. So when you watch the show, you can't help but notice that like some of the contestants are totally absorbed in their own basket and their own recipe, but others cannot help but peek at what their other competitors are doing over in their workstations. While it's obvious that looking at your neighbor's basket is not going to get you ahead and will probably set you back, it just seems that some people can't help it. In a way, we're all looking into each other's baskets. Somehow, envy is the gift that keeps on giving. We can't help peeking into our neighbor's lives, through their windows, at their cars, at their kids, into their Instagram accounts, taking a deep dive into their Facebook history. In fact, this pull is so widespread that it makes it to the top 10 in Judaism, which is the Ten Commandments. What does it say in the Torah? You shall not covet your fellow's house. You shall not covet your fellow's wife, his servant, his maidservant, his ox, his donkey, nor anything that belongs to your fellow. So maybe you didn't covet your fellow's donkey or ox, but maybe you've been coveting his vacations or her new boots. And you might be trying to figure out, are they really spending all that money? Does it just look like it? Is someone else sponsoring it? Are their good looks natural or artificial? (laughs) Either way, this kind of envy described in the 10th commandment is as contemporary as it is ancient. In other words, it's as old as humanity. In the Torah, we learn of the story of Korach. Now, Korach was a first cousin to Moses, and he staged this rebellious coup in the desert. He claimed that the Jewish people didn't need leadership at all because all of them were holy and didn't need to be told what to do. But also, he secretly intended that if there was a leader, it should be, surprise, surprise, himself. This coup, as many coups, was fueled by envy. It was just so hard for Korach to see his first cousin Moses become so elevated to this like high level of leadership because Korach was bright, educated, charismatic, and he had a lot of potential. The problem is he let his envy swallow him up alive, literally. The end of the story describes his dramatic death as the earth swallows him up along with this mob that he incited. I got to say, social media has made for a really interesting study of envy. A lot of people report feeling less secure, more anxious after heavy social media use. And psychology describes this more in emotional rather than moral terms, but I really think a lot of it just boils down to this concept of envy because we all know how seeing someone else's highlight reel can make us feel inferior and envious. And to some degree, that's on us because it's just not smart to make ourselves work that hard to not be envious. And so we should try to practice prevention as well by being mindful of our social media use and about how we allow our thought processes to develop when this jealous thought pops into our head. Anne Brichers, who's an author, she wrote the following. Do not spoil what you have by desiring what you have not. See, the problem with envy is that it's kind of like a monster that lives within us. And when we feed it and let it come out, right, it can consume us. It has the power to literally steal our peace of mind, our relationships, our happiness. Because there's always going to be things that other people have that we don't have, always. 
But when we wallow in this envy, we like obsess about everything that we don't have to the exclusion of everything that we do have. It's exactly like being on Chopped and wasting your time letting your eyes wander to your competitor's basket. The only way to win the envy game is to just focus exclusively on your own basket. By the same token, Judaism teaches that we each carry a responsibility not to make other people jealous of us. It's one thing to have a moderate sense of pride about ourselves or our accomplishments or those of our family members. But when we step over the line, right, like when we become arrogant or flaunt our blessings, that's when we invite envy. And that is dangerous. I remember when I first got engaged, I was so enamored with my fiancé, and I had so much fun telling my friends all about him and how incredible he was. But at some point, I realized that I was making other people jealous because so many of my friends didn't have a special someone, and they were definitely happy for me. And, you know, everyone indulges a blushing bride in her joy and in her moment, but it was still my responsibility to be modest about my blessings. So I just didn't rub it in other people's faces. The truth is that we each come into life with our own mystery basket, right? In my mystery basket are a whole lot of ingredients that I will unpack, so to speak, over the course of my lifetime. With this combination of ingredients, God wants me to create something delicious, right? Take what I gave you and make something amazing with it. And everyone else in my life will also receive a basket full of ingredients of their own. A mystery for my friends and relatives to unpack and create their own recipes with. But it's beyond irrelevant what's in someone else's basket because I can only create something delicious with my own ingredients. And the more time I spend looking at someone else's basket, the less time I have left to create something beautiful with my own. This is why the 10th commandment ends with these words, and everything that belongs to your neighbor. Because you can get stuck in a pattern of looking at one friend and desiring their job, looking at another friend and wanting their spouse, looking at another friend and wanting their house or another one's personality, body type, brains, talents. But every human being is a world unto themselves, right? No one's a composite of everyone else's best attributes. Each person only has one basket, just as you do. And it's got desirable and undesirable elements in there. So if you want to be envious about something about that person, then ask yourself, do I really want everything that belongs to that person? Would I really want the whole package? Because what social media misses is the whole story, the whole basket, every single ingredient. Some of them are more delicious than others. Some of them are easier to cope with than others. And if you looked into your friend's whole basket, you'd probably choose yours right back. So don't be a Korach. Don't give in to the pull of envy that every human being has struggled with since the dawn of time. Let's rise above. Let's keep our eyes on our own basket. And most importantly, let's create something delicious. This is the Book of Life. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to Momentum Podcasts on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Join Ruchi again next time for more meaning and inspiration from Judaism's most important book to power your day with purpose. You're listening to a Momentum Podcast. For unlimited inspiration, wisdom, and empowerment, visit MomentumUnlimited.org.